Bit of a disaster this morning. Justin and myself, we've traveled up to North Wales, giving it a bit of a bash. I have to wait until he comes back, tell you what the name of the water is. Uh, keep forgetting the bloody name, but it's a beautiful spot. We arrive and the water is a bit like this. And this, but then, Wicked, isn't it? That's a breathe in. Yeah, it work. <laughs> okay, so Justin and myself have headed off to North Wales to Craig Gluid Springs. The date is the 3rd of January 23 and the conditions are a bit overcast with occasional strong winds and heavy rain showers. The first half an hour we spent talking with management and they were very helpful, telling us what patterns to use which is mainly the damsel and fishing it on a sinking line. They also told us to head down towards the windward bank but this isn't a very large water you're going to cover it quite easily it's 26 foot deep and it's spring fed so as we're setting up justin and myself are discussing our approach on the water now it's not very often that we will be fishing the same method or even the same patterns we generally work opposites and then we find out more about the water but what we both agreed on is that we're not going to bother with the damsels. This water sees a hell of a lot of damsels. So fishing with alternative patterns can sometimes pay dividends. And if it fails, we can always move back to the damsels. So we've opted for the four hour catch and release ticket. And Justin's setup is going to be the Rio Aqua 2, a 20 foot tippet with a three fly cast. On the point he's going with his black and green mini lure which he used on the last trip and then he's putting the dial back on both of the droppers. So the point fly Justin has chosen isn't just a good fish catcher, he's chosen it due to the weight and the weight helps present the droppers. So on this water what they do when it comes to stocking is trickle stock. They've got their own stew pond and what they do as fish come out they'll put more fish in on a daily basis so long as the fish are coming out so that means we've got a good handful of stockies in the water at most times and the stockies when they go in will spend most of the time higher in the columns and they're more prepared to chase and you'll find that you can pick them up on a variety of patterns but for the rest of the fish they are starting to slow up, they're not eating as much and they are becoming lethargic and these can be at times quite tricky to catch and for most of the time they are the better fish. Okay for all the reviews and all the footage that I've seen on this water they always seem to recommend the sinking line so I've decided to go with the floating line. Now the thing is unless you try these things you're never going to know and I have fished plenty of times in the winter with the floating line where it's outfished the sinking line. Okay, so the floating line can cover a lot of situations, but one thing it certainly can't do, and that's fishing patterns with a little bit of pace lower in the columns. The line I'm using is the Rio Single Spay. I've got my 5 foot intermediate braid on there, and then a 15 foot tippet, but that'll be fished with a 2 fly cast. But I'll be using a mix of patterns. I haven't even started fishing yet and Justin's just had his first fish and that's in the 10 minutes and that was on the point fly. Nice size fish isn't it? Yeah he's got a fly in him. Has he got a fly in him? Yeah. Oh we got a free fly. <laughs> And he's off. He's gone. Nice one, matey. What? Free buzzer. The two knocks already. Fishing it quick across the top. 
what Justin and myself have noticed there's a handful of fish and they're moving about in this bottom end of the lake. They're moving quite quickly, but they're higher in the columns. The chances are these are gonna be stock fish. And the best chance of picking these up is just making sure your fly is in the right place at the right time. Now there is two other anglers on the water. And what I've noticed is they're spending most of their time fishing down the wind. So I'd say that they're finding it a bit difficult with the conditions. So if you want to come and fish this water and your casting isn't quite on it, I would pick the day. But I think this water certainly gets its fair share of wind due to its location. One thing you'll notice about this water when you're looking around, that it's got plenty of room for a good back cast. There's only the one bank which is behind me now, which will limit the back cast. But if you're doing a steeple cast, you're going to be fine. Okay, so I continue fan casting and covering as much water as I possibly can. And that's with the faster retrieve. But now I've got to go through it all again and slow it up. Okay, when I'm fishing a lot slower and I want the fly to go a bit deeper, what you'll notice I'm making a mend. But making that mend takes the wind resistance off the line and then enables the fly to go down. Took your time. Okay, Justin into another fish. And it ain't gonna be much longer. And he's into his next again. I went for my dropper because I felt uh, the point fly hit the fish up when I struck. Here we go. So it appears a few fish have moved back into this corner. Justin's obviously picking them up, but all I'm getting is a few knocks. I just can't get them to connect. Oh, and again. Retrieving it here, I end up with two knocks. But to keep the retrieve going without reacting to the knock is very difficult. I keep wanting to lift into the fish whenever you get a knock, but to resist it and to keep the retrieve going, can then end up with a fish. And what was I fishing? Oh, strong fish. Okay, giving up on the floating line, now join Justin on the Rio 2. Rio Aqua 2. I swallowed this one. It's real one, eh? Huh? That's what I put on now. Yeah, black and green. My black and green, yeah. Yeah. The fish from up here. Uh -huh. I'll spot the fish up here for you. <laughs> okay, so I had to climb the bank to retrieve my fly. Now what's happening is the wind direction is slightly changing. It's not directly at me, it's slightly more towards me though. So on a steeple cast, the line position on the back cast is probably more like 11 o'clock. But with that wind pushing it, it's dropping it in towards the bank. Oh, missed that one. I just had a knock then. Yeah, I'm not telling you what it is. Okay, well, it's a trout. Ella dying. Okay, I had to bribe my new friend Gaz, who helps run the water, to go over and try and keep Justin occupied while I have a chance to catch up. I am.
on the yellow dine again, mate. Okay, I picked this fish up. Fishing a lot deeper, a lot slower. But as soon as it hit the lure, you knew it was a better fish. It didn't shoot off, it was just heavy. But it kept down in the water. I couldn't get him up. I did bully him a bit, mind. But as much as I bullied this fish, I couldn't get it up to the top. It's a good fish too. Now these fish in here are Exmoor stock. And anybody that fishes the Exmoor stock knows you're in for a battle. But what makes these fish so different? It's more about the water they're in. And this water here is so much like our local water, Hayes Castle. Both of which are very near the coast, well oxygenated, spring fed. And there's a combination there that improves the quality of that fish. They become really hard fighters. That was a bit of a bugger, that one. Best fish for the day, and I didn't even get to look at it properly. Try a lot deeper, put it down a lot deeper and just slowly. You won't believe what I caught that or not. Don't tell him. All it is is on a size 16 hook, small bead, the smallest bit of marabou, just tied straight onto the hook, so it swims quite nicely. Okay, so having changed to the intermediate line, the fishing certainly has improved, or it's certainly given me more positive takes. Why they were just nipping more on the floater, I don't know. But the takes on the intermediate are certainly more positive, resulting in more fish to the net. The casting's getting a bit tricky now, that wind's certainly picking up. And Justin and myself have the water to ourselves. The other two anglers had given up. I think it just got a bit too rough, and sadly, they'd only got the one fish between the two of them. Justin, on the other hand, he's been slowly picking them out throughout the day. We'd lost count after about 15. But anybody that knows Justin, or has fished with Justin, knows that he's a bit of a fishing machine. I've fished alongside him plenty of times, and your pattern could be right alongside. But for some reason, 9 times out of 10, that fish will pick his pattern up. I don't think we'll ever figure out what the heck's going on there. And it ain't just luck. I've fished with him long enough. He's consistent. But what he's been doing today, basically, is just following the fish. He's moving around the water a lot more. And he's fishing high and lower in the columns. If he's fishing lower, he's obviously fishing a bit slower. But if he feels that there's nothing much happening lower down, he'll fish it a lot faster, keeping higher in the water. So he's constantly searching for the fish. And obviously with this line that he has on, you can move pretty quick. But what he has told me is that the Dowbacks have been hitting as many fish as the point fly. And when they're hitting the Diao, they're hitting it so hard, it's like a proper buzzer take. So you know, they really want it. Okay, so this is a new water for me. For a lot of people, they often ask us, what would your approach be when you go out onto a new water that you've never fished before? To be honest, it's much the same no matter what water you're on. And there's always going to be somebody out on the water or in at the booking office that could advise you. But one thing I often do before I go out onto a new water that I've never been on before is I'll go onto YouTube. 
look for videos of the water. Now, when I'm looking at these videos, I'm not really too bothered about the method. As I know, the method might be working on the day they're there, but the following day could be totally different. And I am not too worried about how many fish they're catching. What I'm more interested in is getting that connection with the water. While I'm watching the video, I'm scanning the water. And then I tend to get a bit of a connection with that water. So the one channel I did clock on to that covers this water more than anybody is Jake's Fishing Wales. Now, Justin and myself have met Jake on a previous trip to North Wales. Really nice guy. Now, Jake and myself, we hit it off straight away. As you would, we've got a lot in common. We're both fishermen, but we're also both creators. So there's plenty to talk about. But it was really great meeting you, Jake. Uh, keep in touch. Uh, Justin and myself will be doing a good few more trips up North Wales and maybe even join us on one of the wild trout adventures. Okay, so what you can notice now is that the wind is really starting to pick up and obviously it's affecting the cast. The cast is becoming more and more difficult and the wind is picking it up and sending me too far downwind. So what I'll do is I'll work my way down towards the corner and around and start casting into the wind. Now you might think casting into the wind is going to be more difficult, but actually it's a lot easier to cast into the wind. There's less line to be picked up by the wind as opposed to casting across the wind. So Justin and myself are both very used to fishing in conditions like this. Hayes Castle Fishery in Pembrokeshire, as I've said before, is very much like this. And Justin also fishes a lot of Tyvee pools and the conditions there are very much the same. The wind seemed to get stronger and stronger with every cast and I found myself fishing more downwind and in towards the margins until I got stuck on the bottom. I couldn't dislodge it. I went downwind with it now it's but eventually really it snapped. So I didn't even bother setting up again as the wind was just getting stronger. So I thought I'd go around and just have a laugh at Justin. Okay, we're gonna leave you now with this last bit of lovely fresh air. And what I want you to do next at the end is press the subscribe button and don't forget to hit the bell. Now hitting the bell means you're gonna get a notification for the next video. And this one, believe me, you don't wanna miss out. It's unforgettable. And for a few, it may be a little bit annoying. So, from Justin and myself, on a very windy North Wales lake, take care. It's crazy weather now. What's it, what? Fuck now, what up? Yeah. <laughs> you. It's wicked, isn't it? Get those brakes, like there now. Yeah, you get, get them brakes.